Hey everyone, Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video where we're going to do another one of my Christmas soaps, which I call Sugar and Spice. Now I have done Sugar and Spice for the last couple of years, but this year I'm going to do something just a little bit different with the design. Let's go and see how I make it. I already have the embeds made for this soap. If you caught the September vlog, you would have seen me making these. I made the little gingerbread at the same time as making my ginger soaps, and these are made while the shop was quiet. I will link a video. I'm pretty sure I did it the last time I did the sugar and spice soap showing how to do them, so I'll link that video if I did in fact do that. Um, but we're going to jump in and start making this soap. I'm going to make it a little bit different to how I have done it in previous years, and we're going to be using one of the wickedly scraper tools in this one so let's get started as we always do by pouring our lye water into our oils and then I'm going to split it up for some colors now I do have a big bucket here and I'm going to go off camera to do it I'm going to weigh eight weigh out 800 grams of soap into there for the top of this soap so let's get started Okay, so I've just poured some of that off. I'm going to pour out a bit extra for some titanium dioxide. And in here, I've got a little bit of Sahara or Sahara mica. I'm not going to pour off a lot because I'm just going to do a bit of a swirl with those. Now into the big bucket, I'm going to put some mocha mica. I know that this fragrance oil discolors, so I'm just going to help it along a little bit there. So pop that in. I'm going to mix that white up first so we don't discolor it when I pour my fragrance in here I'm only going to add it into my main batch here because I know it does discolor I want my white to stay white and I want this Sahara to stay a kind of a coppery look All right, so we've grabbed a mold. I am going to go for my very traditional curly whirly pour. So I'm gonna pour in and then drop my colors and then pour some more of this main color. I really should do some different styles of pours, but this one is always my favorite. It always works so well. So we're gonna completely scrape these containers out because I don't want any of that left over. Alright, so we've got both of those colours in. I suppose I should also say that the fragrance that I have added in here is a cinnamon vanilla. It's a body safe one, which is very hard to find, but it's always been so popular when I've used it in this um, soap for the last couple of years. Alright, let's get that in there. Now it's time to get those curly whirlies hopefully happening and pour that in. Going to give this a bit of a scrape out, get it in here. Then I'm going to let it set up for a little bit and then we're going to come back and we're going to get the scraper tool and pop that through. This is set up enough now that I can get my scraper tool and I'm just going to put this down far enough that the top of the soap comes to the top of those little um, arcs. <laughs> and then I'm using the guide tools that um, Lee does as well to help guide this along and I'm just going to very gently pull it making sure not to push too hard so that I don't move my guides but making sure that it's still on the top of the soap there and as I start to get this sort of build up here I am going to grab my spatula and I have a piping bag here and I find this is the best way so that you don't end up wasting all of this soap because it's a bit hard to get it into a mold looking nice when it's this set up but I find in a piping bag, you can pipe it into a smaller silicone mold. 
All right, got most of that out of the way. Let's keep going. I have noticed it's pulled a little bit too much off down here. So what I'm gonna do is just fill that gap back in and pull pull my um, mold down here again. If it wasn't so badly damaged, I would probably leave it. Like here, I, would prob I wouldn't bother with that. But down there, it has actually pulled off a fair amount. So I'm just gonna fill that back in. We'll pull this bit off here. Keep coming. As you get to the end, kind of just tip it back and pull up. Scrape off what we don't need. So I am going to come back down here and do that again. So just going to push it down. This is where the guides are so good because you can make sure you're back at that same depth. For some reason, it don't want to scrape it there. I'm just going to let this sit here for another five minutes because I think it's just not quite firm enough and all I'm doing is making a mess. Okay, so I've let this sit up for a little bit longer. Let's try again. And, oh, for goodness sake, this worked earlier today. I made one of these soaps earlier today and I had absolutely no issue or drama with it. It scraped beautifully and now I want to do it on camera. It doesn't want to work. So I did actually just start this one before turning the camera back on to make sure that it was going to do. I think I was trying to do it before it was set up enough. So again, I'm just gonna scrape this excess off with the spatula and it is looking much better now. There's a little bit where it's not completely um, completely rounded, but I think it really is. This, earlier on today, this set up quickly on me. Well, not quickly, but it's set up quicker than what this one is. <laughs> it worked so well. Um, but now, yeah, because I wanna film it, it's gonna misbehave. Anyhow, we have got our little grooves in here. I am not going to mess around with it too much because we'll end up ruining it. So now that I've got that, I am going to go and grab that other bucket of soap that I poured off. The first thing I am going to do is on this is take these clips off because if you don't take them off, they break. Ask me how I know. Okay, so here's that other bit that I poured off. I'm going to put some white in there going to mix it up and then I'm just going to simply pour it on the top of that soap that we've just sculpted there. Give, give my mould a bit of a tidy up because we're on a bit of a, a mess. The ends get cut off anyway. All right, let's get this white tipped in here. This. I swear, the one I made earlier today came up so much easier than what this one is, but they're both going to look really super cute once they're cut. <laughs> so here's my mould. This is from my earlier soap that I did today, and I swear it just works so much easier than this one. All I'm gonna do now is this leftover piping. I'm just gonna pipe into this mold and these will be little soaps that I either give away or will go into my soap pens, bags, um, anything like that. And so I'm gonna squeeze it all out. And I, as I, said, I like to put it in the piping bag because it's just far easier to pipe this in than rather trying to scrape it out in, with the spatula and then dumping it into the mold. You can actually get some nicer looking soaps doing it this way. Get the very last little bit of that soap out. And then that white should be textured enough or set up enough that we can um, work on that again. So now what I'm gonna do is just grab myself a spoon and all I'm gonna do is put one little scoop across the top here. 
This is such a fine art to get this soap to the right texture so that you can do these beautiful spoon tops. The best person I see who does the most gorgeous spoon tops is Tiggy from Primitive Soaps. I get so jealous when I watch her doing her spoon tops because it just looks so beautiful but it is pretty much a matter of having the soap at the right texture to get that real gorgeous flow through and I'm just almost at the um, point of having missed it for the texture on this one but we've got it so now it is time to get our embeds on now before I put the embeds on, I have got some Blizzard Mica in my little sprayer and I'm gonna spray the top of this one. I'd like to do it first so I don't get the mica all over the embeds. But this mica gives it this beautiful sheen. All right, so let's start by putting our little gingerbreads on. And I'm actually gonna turn this around. <laughs> so they go this way. And I'm going to put my little gingerbreads, one on each bar. Now they are at the moment different colours because I have been going through making these extra little gingerbreads as I made my main little ginger soaps, which I make each year for the kids for Christmas. And then any sort of leftover from pouring the bigger gingers I make these smaller ones now the really really dark ones they were the first gingers that I poured and these paler ones are the ones that I've poured much later so they will darken up let's get one on each of these if not our little soaps will all just have different colored gingerbreads on them people can choose which one that they prefer to have so let's get them in and then I have some little gumdrops to stick on here. So normally when I've done this soap I have always put the little gingerbread man and the gumdrop but previously I have never done the, um, the scraper tool through the middle. Part of that was because I had all these scraper tools which um, Lee made for me custom to those Nicole molds that I used to have. And then when I swapped to the Nurture Soap ones, the Nurture Soap molds were a little bit wider than what the Nicole ones were. And they were just a little bit too hard to try and use the scraper tools to try and keep it centered and it, you know, not go winky wonky while you were using them. Um, so I stopped using them for a while, but now that I've got these new molds, these are the same width as those Nicole molds. So my scraper tools fit. So I have been having a bit more of a play with them. All right, we've got those in. Let me get my little um, jubes in there as well. And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna put a red, then a white, and then a green, but I'm gonna start by putting all my red ones in just so it doesn't get too difficult, you know, trying to get fingers between all these embeds. I'm gonna put some music to this. So sugar and spice is now in the mold and it is looking super cute these little jubes once I rolled them out with the soap dough I sprinkled them with some um, blizzard mica to give them that bit of shine now here's a little bit of a tip for you if you are covering soap in mica normally you then end up with mica all over your fingers whenever you go to touch them but once you've got them actually covered in that mica if you give them a spray with some 70% alcohol it sets that mica onto the soap and then it doesn't come off each time that you touch them so that is my little tip to make sure that your customers don't end up with mica all over their fingers but we're going to leave this one sit overnight and we'll be back in just a moment and we'll check out what we've got on the inside okay we are ready to cut into sugar and spice I was a bit surprised to see we had a bit of a air pocket down on the side of this one especially when the other loaf that I've done the same doesn't so I'm not sure what happened there maybe it was all that difficulty I had with trying to um, scrape the, <laughs> the shape the words did not want to come then 
so maybe it was that little bit of difficulty there gonna get this one lined up I've made sure to put my gingerbreads on this side of my cutter so that I don't knock them off as I pull this down because they're just a little bit too tall it is looking like they are all right to go through and let's cut through it's been sitting here for a couple of days longer than I usually like to leave it so it's a little bit tougher please don't break on me oh <laughs> I went through that was a big sigh of relief that that didn't crack on me and let's take a look so here is the first one out this must be at the end where i was having real trouble that side's a little bit plain but wait until you see the next bar look at that that's much better that's got some beautiful curly whirlies happening in there and i love how the um how the soap is all drippy through there now i can actually see this is the end where i was having lots and lots of trouble getting it to pull through because you can actually see this is real difference between sort of the bottom here and then you see the the soap has a different swirl on the top so that must have been where i put the soap back on the top um, and re-scraped it but it's still looking super super cute with those little gingerbread and the little um, jube lollies on there and you can see these gingerbread are all starting to really darken up the really light ones are the very last gingerbreads i made to go on here oh look we're getting better now that we're away from that one end where i was having lots of difficulties but i am super happy with how this one has come together and it is smelling really really good as well and it's always been popular so we've got the two loaves of this one so hopefully i will have enough this christmas for everyone so I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me as I made my sugar and spice soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. And until the next video comes out, I hope you have a great one and I will see you then. Bye.